but uh, no danger with that. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be honest that um, I am really nervous about doing this, which is why I'm reading it. Uh, I went to a, a wedding about two years ago, and the bridegroom was more nervous than me. And, uh, and when he got his best man up to make a speech, his best man was more nervous than the bridegroom was. And when he proposed a toast, instead of proposing it to the bride and groom, he proposed it to the groom and the groom's mum. And what he wished them a lifetime of was just wrong on so many levels. Um, um, I'm going to keep the speech short because I know it's kind of late in the evening. Um, so we've got... Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to read it nice and slow. Um, so Alicia, you can keep up. Um, you leave my granddaughter um, firstly, alone. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Ollie Mers for the loan of one of his suits today. Um, which was very nice of him, and uh, the only thing I was really nervous about today was getting the rings wrong. <laughs> Lots of things to be nervous about today, but I was nervous about getting the rings wrong, and so I put them in separate pockets, and uh, Emma's was in the right-hand pocket, and Dale's in the left-hand pocket, and that probably makes no sense to anybody else, it's, a, you know, it's two rings, just by putting them in different pockets, how can you possibly tell the difference, it's easy, Emma's always right. <laughs> 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 um, there are several toasts, actually, there'll, there'll be a few now, so I hope you've all got drinks. Um, the first one... I'm drinking Coke, I apologise if I burp a lot during this. Um, because I didn't want to get drunk until I'd done the speech. <laughs> Cheers for that until waiting until all my closing time. Um, the first one is a, is, is a serious speech, and I know that there are a few people um, that Daryl and Emma uh, really wish could be here today but can't, uh, for many different reasons, friends and family, and some loved ones as well. And, um, but they're not far from our thoughts today, and I'd like to first drink a toast to absent friends. Absent friends, yeah, you can join in with that. Cheers. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm feeling really hot. Um, can you can you hold that for me? MJ, ready? Can you? I, I, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. I apologise, but it is really hot, and I'm really nervous anyway. So. No, no, I, I really do apologise, but. I, No, no, I, I'm, I'm feeling very hot, and I don't feel very hot at all. Okay, you're dead. So I'm going, yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of medical people here. I do apologise. Oh, wow, that's so hot. I've been wearing it all bleeding day. <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid to look at Emery, she's smiling. <laughs> when Daryl texted me on the evening of the 1st of February last year to, to uh, tell me they were getting married and ask me to be the best man, I went, what the f I mean, really, I was surprised. And I, I, but apparently everybody else that they had texted and made this announcement to all asked if Emma was pregnant. Of course she wasn't. Well done for giving her the idea though. That's a, that's a great one. So it was nice to have Erin here today as a result. Um, knowing that neither of them like a fuss, I did ask at the time what kind of wedding they were thinking of. And Daryl said he was hoping for a traditional wedding. And I thought this was unusually grand for them. So I asked, you know, what do you mean by a traditional wedding? And he said, well, the bride's father pays for everything. Um, and on that note, I'd like to thank David, the father of the bride, for getting Emma there today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to get rid of that. There's really nothing on it. Stop your panicking. Um, also, I mean, there have been lots of people taking photographs today. And... Um, I'd like to thank Linda, the, the mother of the groom, for taking so many pictures today, and she is a fantastic photographer, 
And uh, she's such a good photographer that she actually got a picture of Alicia smiling. So that's uh, amazing. Uh, which brings me to the next toast. And that I would like you to join me today in drinking a toast to Alicia, Erin and Freya, the bridesmaids. Who look absolutely lovely, the bridesmaids. And although that sounded very flippant, um, uh, I particularly wanted to say that uh, Alicia does look very, very nice today. Seriously, dressed up like that, you do look very special. Um, you're such a bad person. <laughs> now, one of the best man's duties is usually to read telegrams and messages from well-wishers. And you're lucky, because there ain't them, so that <laughs> saved a bit of time. Um, it's also a tradition that the best man shares some embarrassing stories about the groom. Um, but I haven't got any, and that's really boring, but it's true. And uh, most of the stories I have about him that involve embarrassing things, it's usually me that gets embarrassed by them, so I'm not sharing them. I'm not sharing them. Check my website. Yeah, check his website. He's probably got cards on him anyway. Didn't ask you what? Uh, we've, we've only got this evening. <laughs> we haven't got that long. Um, there's a line uh, by Shakespeare. And, uh, it's a line. Actually, it's from The Muppet Christmas Carol. And uh, it is, If you want to know the measure of a man, you simply count his friends. And I know that Daryl and Emma have many, many friends. Uh, in fact, between them, they have most of Watford and the surrounding areas covered. <laughs> Um, so I do feel genuinely honoured to have been selected to be the best man on their big day. I'm sure you'll agree that as friends they are the most loyal, caring, supportive and generous friends that one could hope to have. The fact that two people with such qualities have met... What have I written? This, I, I typed this up and I still don't understand it. Qualities have... Uh, and I, you'd never believe this, but I've actually rehearsed this twice. Prefer yeah. The fact that two people with such profound qualities have met surely makes them a truly unique couple and their marriage makes them a truly remarkable team. And together with Alicia and Erin, they make a great family. And what is a family? A family is a tribe and it's ruled by a mighty chieftain. <laughs> yeah, and if you behave yourself, Daryl, she'll make you stew now and again. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close in a minute. I'm gonna close here before your eyes do. Um, but if you see me at the bar later, I actually did four weeks with no beer because this suit jacket was so tight. I wanted to lose this, and then we had a stag do last weekend that blew all that out of the water. So I've just been drinking pop all day, so I actually want a beer now. Um, so oh, and just for the benefit of the bar staff, could, could I just find out if anybody is thinking of drinking Bloody Mary? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. There you go. That's the reaction I wanted. If you don't understand that, ask Alicia about it afterwards and she'll, she'll explain that one to you. Um, there's a toast, another toast I'd like to do now. It's one I've actually stolen from one of my favourite films. And it's, it is to all the friends and family in the room. And it's from a film all about Eve, which is one of my favourite films. And this is what the toast was. There are very few minutes very few moments in life as good as this. Let's remember it. To each of us, and all of us, never have we been more close, may we never be farther apart. So, to friends. I was enthusiastic. <laughs> this, is, this is why I was never a buttons red coat. Um, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that can, I would like you now to all please stand. If you can. Thanks, both of you. <laughs> no, you're fine, you're fine. You say, all right, you can stand if you want. Um, I would like you all, please, now, if you can, just to lean a little to your right. I'll be in the key. And now just a little to your left. And now a little forward. And now a little back. And I'd like it now forever to be known that my speech was able to move the audience. You can take the boy out of panto, but... <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, please, I would ask you all to raise your glasses and join me in toasting the health of Emma and Daryl, the bride and groom. Hey, hey, oh, all together or not at all, right? We'll try again. Emma and Daryl, the bride and groom. Bless your luck. And I'll hand you over to Daryl because he wants to say something. Thanks. <laughs> I know a lot of you probably think I'm going to sing a song. I'm not. Yeah, not this weekend, no. especially after last Saturday. Um, I just like to thank everyone, all, all family, all my friends, especially people from family and friends that can no longer be here to see this day. Um, it's been a truly great day for myself, and I'm hoping everyone feels the same way. And, uh, yeah, thank you everyone for being here, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Cheers. Uh, is it, yeah, I was just, just checking to see if there's any more there. Okay. Let's just give them a round of applause, go on for the speeches. Thank you. Right, we're going on, music's going on until half past.